approach to a patient with pale or swollen discs. Start by taking a history of diminution of vision. Was it sudden or gradual? Was it transient or is it permanent? Are there any associations such as double vision, pain or ocular movements, headaches, any other focal neurological deficits? On examination, look for the ocular movements, any dysmotility, any paresis, any ptosis. Look at the pupillary responses, particularly the RAPD. In the fundus, look at the disc features and depending on the pathology, do the color vision. It's very important, the contrast sensitivity. So if the visual functions seem to be affected out of proportion to the visual acuity that may sometimes be seen in optic neuritis. Do a confrontation visual field to get a basic idea of the visual field defect. If what you see in the fundus is a pale disc, try to classify it. Is it a primary optic atrophy or a secondary optic atrophy based on its features? If what you observe in the fundus is a swollen disc, then look, is it unilateral or bilateral? Is it hyperemic or pallid? Here are some examples of disc edema. The investigations include ocular investigations such as the visual fields where you want to try and find what type of field defect is it. Is it the central, centrocecal, altitudinal, constriction, hemianopic, what kind of field loss? You can do the OCT to look for the RNFL thickening or loss. A VEP can help you know whether the visual function is, there is a delay in the P100 latency or not, or there is a decreased amplitude, and neuroimaging such as a CT or MRI is often needed. Optic neuropathy could fit into one of these various etiologies. Let us look at a few cases. This is a young male who has had loss of vision in one eye after a road traffic see the primary optic atrophy in the left eye. The imaging shows an orbital fracture near the optic canal. This is a 36 year old female with gradual loss of vision in both the eyes. You can see that there is a temporal pallor appearing in both the optic discs. Differential diagnosis could be either a bilateral retrobulbar neuritis, a toxic optic neuropathy, some kind of a compressive optic neuropathy. On investigation, the visual fields show a bitemporal hemianopia that immediately becomes an indication for imaging. Imaging shows a large pituitary macroadenoma that is compressing on the chiasma, and the plan is a neurosurgical intervention. So here is a primary optic atrophy due to a compressive optic neuropathy. 24-year-old male patient with vision loss in both the eyes is showing a bilateral temporal pallor on his optic nerves. There is a central or centrocecal scotoma on the visual fields. This could either be a toxic optic neuropathy, but one always has to keep the Leber's hereditary optic neuropathy in mind as well. A 50-year-old male patient with occasional headaches having a gradual progressive loss of vision in the left eye presented with minimal proptosis, all visual functions in the right eye were normal. You can notice how there is a secondary optic atrophy in the left eye optic disc. The differential diagnosis could be optic neuritis, an inflammatory optic neuropathy, a compressive optic neuropathy. The investigation of choice here is a neuroimaging. Neuroimaging reveals a sphenoid wing meningioma, which would require a neurosurgical intervention. So there was a compressive optic neuropathy going to on to a secondary optic atrophy. Here is a 32-year-old female with sudden loss of vision in the left eye. You can notice that there is a slightly blurred disc margins. So there is a unilateral disc edema, which is hyperemic, very suggestive of papillitis. So the differential diagnosis, the topmost would be an optic neuritis. And you want here is another young female who's overweight and has history of headaches on and off and presenting with a normal visual acuity but very swollen discs. You can see peripapillary hemorrhages, uh, very, very swollen bilateral disc edema. The MRI is within normal limits. So this is likely to be idiopathic intracranial hypertension. And you want to investigate by doing an opening pressure on the, by a lumbar puncture 
and treatment would, would medical treatment using acetazolamide or sometimes surgical optic nerve sheath fenestration or VP shunts. This is the fundus image of an elderly hypertensive female who's noticed vision loss on waking up the right eye. There is a right eye RAPD. You can see there is a segmental disc edema in the right eye. The left disc is showing a very small cup disc ratio. This is highly suggestive of NAION. In the next slide you will be able to see the OCT images and the fields showing disc edema and a highly constricted visual field. Management of NAION involves control of the systemic factor which is blood pressure in this case and over time you can see that there is some improvement in visual acuity. So the idea is to approach each case in a systematic manner, know the typical presentations, place the patient in one of the few buckets such as is it a primary optic atrophy, a secondary optic atrophy, is it unilateral disc edema, bilateral disc edema and then do targeted investigations for the same.